I started off well. I was born on 29th November 1974 at the Aga Khan Hospital. <laughs> the other day when we were cleaning up the house at my parents' place, I found Kenya Airways tickets of 1980 worth 200 bob. <laughs> we used to go to Mombasa for the annual ASK show. <laughs> this young man in the late 70s used to work for the Kenya Meat Commission, KMC. Yeah. And that's how we got to go to Mombasa, Agricultural Society of Kenya Show. I grew up in California. California is on the west coast, Los Angeles, of the United <laughs> States of America. The direction I have here is Eastlands in Kenya. That's where I grew up. In 1980s, there, he upgraded and he was employed by a prestigious tour company. And that our life, uh, you know, went up a bit. Until when in August, they asked him to work. And he said, no, 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 no. I have to take my family for the ASK show. They insisted, they cajoled, they begged him. He refused. He said, no, I've taken my family for the ASK show. He was fired. <laughs> <laughs> but we still yes. went for the ASK show. You see, Mr. Kigondo here, my father, is a man who stands up for what he believes in. You know? And uh, if he has to take his family for the ASK show, whether or not you are giving him work, he will go. In 1984, I went home with bloodshot red eyes, and he asked me, oh, hey, what's the problem? I told him, we were swimming in dark green waters against frogs at Roland Camp. The pool was dirty. Roland Camp was the pool that Lovington Primary School used to swim in. The next day, he accompanied me to school, and as I went to class, he went straight to Mrs. Mutinda's office. Mrs. Mutinda was the legendary headmistress. By the time he left the office, Lovington Primary School was swimming at the YMCA. <laughs> and my eyes were no longer red. One man who stood up against the formidable forces and helped many other children have less red eyes and a good life. That's what Mr. Kigondu was. He was a member of the PTA, Parents Teachers Association. More often than not, he was accompanied by police out of PTA meetings for <laughs> talking loudly. Police used to accompany him. You see, Mr. Kigondu is not one to keep quiet when he thinks injustices are occurring. Yeah? It doesn't matter where it, he will voice out. Dad used to accompany us in the bus from California to town so that we get the bus to go to Lovington, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. If you reached at 6.31, the bus to Lovington left you, and we were never left when he accompanied us. In 1990, he had a swelling in his neck, and the doctors said that it's a growth on the thyroid, thyroid gland and it needed surgery. And he was scheduled for surgery. We were so scared. Surgery, this man who has never been sick, 
and all of a sudden he has to go for surgery. Luckily, he had a successful surgery and he did what is called partial thyroidectomy. A bit of the thyroid is removed because of it. Later when I was in med school, I read about this thyroid disease. And then some things started clipping, you know. This, he, over the past, I think he had displayed some of the symptoms of thyroid, like who shouts at everyone, where even he's looking for fights, you know. Those, those are signs of thyroid disease. Yeah, I, I mean, they're thyroid disease. But over and above that, some of his actions I attributed to how he was raised, how he grew up, and um, that aggression. My neighbor in California called Gavere. Gavere called my dad Noriega. Noriega, after the South American dictator because of the violence he used to try to display on the road. Noriega here <laughs> may have a tough exterior but he has a gentle interior that he might not even know about. He was very proud of us, um, we could tell. And he attended every event of us as children, me and my three siblings. And in each event, he took photographs. I'm also a photographer. Uh, I take a lot of photographs. It's a case of monkey see, monkey do. Uh, I was also in some PTA. Monkey see, monkey do. Um, at home, Miss, we used to comb dad's hair. We used to comb dad's hair. As he's teaching us mathematics, he gave us stories as we combed his hair. Imagine my shock when I, re I heard that people don't comb their dad's hair. I w you know, it looked normal. When I reflect back, I think it was his way of bonding with the children. Sadly, he hasn't given me the privilege of combing his hair. My name is Andrew Gishia Kigondu. I believe the third. I share names and a lot more with my grandfather, aside from good looks and charm. Uh, My father, who's an obstetrician gynecologist by profession, his title is the president of Kenya Medical Association. <laughs> He's a mentor to many upcoming doctors and a host of many other titles and accolades. But to me and my sister Melissa, his dad. Dad was the one who'd come to all our events. He wouldn't just be at the events, he'd be at the front, with his camera, I'm surprised he's not taking a video right now. <laughs> He'd be raising his hand whenever he had a question, and he wouldn't put it down no matter what, unless he was satisfied. I guess he gets that from his dad. Surprise police didn't take him out as well from the PTA meeting. <laughs> he's also a really funny guy. It's genetics. He's the king of dad jokes, as my friends have told me. And he also watches football. I love watching football with him. Except when my team loses. Whoa, oh, I never hear the end of it. Aside from that, whenever he had a conference or a workshop, he'd take us out. So I've been around the country and outside the country, thanks to him. I haven't been to the Mombasa show yet. I hold you on that. When I'm a bit old, I'll have a lot more to say. But what I can't say for now is, there is love. My Guka and my dad have given me the gift of knowing that even though I face an uncertain future, no matter what happens, I can call either of them. I can sit with them like this, not with a crowd in front of us, of course, but I can sit with them like this. I can have a word with them. I can just sit there in silence. They can give me advice. And with that, I know that I can face an uncertain future standing on the shoulders of these two giants. Wait. Guka and Dad, Guka and Dad, I'd like to say I love you guys. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. God, Dad.
Come down, come down. <laughs> uh, um, I feel very pr proud that uh, Andrew and Simon, I, I love you guys. I had the word love here be used. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, this is for sure. And uh, <laughs> our, 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 our love story, was it love story? Engage? <laughs> of course, yes. We may have a few misgivings, but all I did, I did it my way. Hey. But, hey. but, <laughs> my dance, my dan uh, dynasty, is it? Is of course uh, very much con uh, contributed by my wife, Elizabeth Wairimo. Ninawa Simon. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can see my life was, uh, has been uh, very nice. Huh? And ladies and gentlemen, that is my love story. A father who contributed more than he could afford. He gave us money, he gave us uh, love, he gave us wisdom, but more importantly, he was present. He took us to Lovington Primary Schools for us to get an education better than was next to the house. He rode my sister, last born sister, on his bicycle to nursery school to keep fit, but I suspect it was an economic decision. <laughs> he gave in to my insistence on going to a private secondary school. It was an economic decision. For him, he was waiting for that other school that they were waiting for, but I went to Strathmore School. And it was difficult for him because the last fees I paid with the Higher Education Loans Board <laughs> loan that I took when I entered university. That means to record the Mawacha, then that's how tough things were. But he still took us to Strathmore School. And more over and above that, he has taught us how to love the woman of my life, Koi. And this I have learned from my dad. Thank you. The way he has loved my mom. And if my son, Andrew, would be as proud as I am of my dad, then my life will be fulfilled. Thank you very much. <laughs>